The Last Shore is a story about home, family, gods, and a red-headed mortal sailing the vastness of the ocean, powered only by hope. The game is devoid of narration. Story is told through expression and atmosphere. The art is like a watercolour painting of the seaside made with pixels. Action takes place on islands. Some are small and others house Zelda-like temples. Abilities come in the form of a bow and sword, and there may be more to come. They are earned from beating temples and are needed to overcome obstacles later in the piece. The Last Shore is a game silent but for its ambience, yet how can it ever be silent whilst the waves of its ocean are always moving? They are an ever-present force, almost symbolising the current of your contemplation. Sailing the ocean of Last Shore is more than just a quest to save your home and family, it's a chance to reflect in its waters. Jaharel, are you alright? It's nothing, sweetie. Just a bad dream because of the storm. Come here. When I was your age, my grandmother used to tell me a story that kept nightmares away. Pankapoo the Dream Caper is an action platformer with a unique narrative angle. Pankapoo the Dream Caper is not just the name of the game, but also a children's story. And as the young boy Jaharel has the story read to him by his father, he imagines it in his head. What the player sees is the world that Jaharel imagines. Pankapoo's story parallels Jaharel's, and if the player watches closely enough, they'll be able to read between the lines and uncover Jaharel's secret trauma. As you may have already noticed, Pankapoo bears a resemblance to Final Fantasy's Black Mage, giving him an immediate sense of familiarity. It's also a nod to how Final Fantasy has inspired the game's world. Among the platforming, there is some light RPG that is most notably exhibited in Pankapoo's different forms. He can be a melee tank, an agile archer, or a healing mage. The game will be released episodically, and right now you can test out a bit of the first chapter in the demo. We're cheating a little bit with this next project, because it's not a game, but rather a new age arcade machine. The Polycade has a sleek minimalist design that will fit right into most homes, sports more than 80 classic titles, and supports both single and two player experiences. The only real downside with it is the 2000 American dollar price tag post Kickstarter. If you have the money, you can get it a bit cheaper over the next three weeks. Now available in stores. I've been doing this a long time. And one thing I can tell you is you've got to have nerves of steel. Okay, just a spooky room. Poltergust is a point and click adventure set within a reality TV show. Gus the talking dog and Nancy, He's ghost of the world's greatest teenage detective, host a ghost hunting show following the recent discovery of undead creatures. As the story jump cuts through time, you'll be teleported between Gus and Nancy's exploring, one on one interviews, behind the scenes footage, and flashbacks. Essentially, it'll just be like a reality TV show. Also, unlike most adventure games, you get total control of the camera, and so you can explore the world in its 3D entirety. This should also translate well to the planned virtual reality version. Poltergeist is exciting because it lets you spectate not from your couch, but from within the game's fictional show itself. It brings you closer to the action than ever before, and with control of the camera lets you affect how it unfolds. Gus can't read. <laughs> Maybe it's a side effect of playing too much Shovel Knight, but we just love Douglas Circumstance and its 8-bit aesthetic. Not only does it borrow an art style from the NES, but also a similar unforgiving level of difficulty, epitomised by Douglas only being able to take one hit. In this platforming adventure, you'll also find 2D shooting and non-linear exploration. There's also a swarm of monsters and bugs to exterminate, and a general level of zaniness that you'd expect from the co-creators of Dropsy the Clown. Only a side project at the moment, Douglas' circumstance already looks well thought out and polished, and if this Kickstarter succeeds, Jesse and Jay can make it their number one priority. Thanks guys for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indieformer.